Hello, welcome to tdcat.com. Today I'm looking at the standalone version of Film Convert for Windows. So here we are in the opening screen pretty much of the standalone version. Film Convert has been around for some time now and uh, is a kind of well-respected and very much sort of loved plugin for um, Final Cut Pro and for Premiere. And uh, it's actually made by a company, I think, called uh, Rubber Monkey Software, who are based in, uh, in New Zealand. And if you look at their website, you wouldn't really think that they were the people who made Film Convert, but there is a small link at the bottom, so I'm pretty sure I've got my facts right on that. And uh, it links to the Film Convert website, which is a lot, lot more pretty than their own website. Anyway, that's beside the point. Let's take a look at the Film Convert here in Windows. This is a first impressions view. I haven't used this yet. I bought this when it was released in April, but I haven't used it yet. And I just want to take a look at it and just run you through it. So here we are. We've got our browser, our clip browser. And it first, my very first thought on this is it actually kind of looks pretty basic. It looks quite um, a little bit kind of 2005-ish, if you know what I mean. And, but that's fine, you know, it's just an, just a, uh, an explorer. Uh, the thumbnails it produces here, so I've, got a, I've set up a little folder, it's got a couple of sample clips in, and the thumbnails it produces are squished, so they don't maintain their aspect ratio, which is a bit weird. And they also don't, if you notice, they don't scrub when I'm on them, and maybe they do once I put them in the shot list, I haven't tried that yet. So we've got a few different clips, we've got some uh, UHD here at 50 frames a second, this is MP4, so that's pretty processor intensive stuff to render on the fly for any, any system really. Uh, we've also got um, a UHD DNX HQ uh, or DNxHR, I think it is, clip. And we have some blah, 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 some DNxHD full HD stuff here as well. So I'm just going to drop these shots in. So, yep, I can select them all just by dragging over them. I'm going to drop them into my shots. And now, can, do I get a... Can I... No, so I don't get any option to... I can list them like that, which is doesn't give me much information. Uh, but... Or I can do them like that, but I don't. I don't have any option. Normally, when you hover over them, they kind of scrub through them, and you can see quickly what's in that clip. But that doesn't happen here. So let's move on to the film settings. These we've got three tabs across the top. First is just the browser to choose the footage. So we have the you know the clip browser, the sample of the clips, and then your shot list. And then this, the film settings is where everything actually happens in relation to the film itself. And these, of course, aren't film clips. These are just uh, a couple of uh, random uh, uh, B-roll and uh, sort of, uh, well, I suppose, BTS-type clips, really. They're not really anything, any proper clips. So let's take a look. Right, so we've got our... Okay, wow, that's... Uh... that's This is our 50 frames per second UHD MP4 clip. And let's just have a quick... And the U1 okay, and the U2 so have already become redundant. Plays it okay. That's yeah, pretty good. Maybe as I get well, to serious overexposure on the, uh, on the skin there. It's a bit better. I'm familiar with it and then I can find yeah, it. Yeah, so it actually plays it all right, which is surprising. I didn't think it would do, do quite so well there. Uh, it's already applied a grade, as you can see, because if we do a bypass, we have a bypass button here. That's nice. So that's our original. That's our... It's sort of funny, isn't it, when you switch back to the original, it suddenly looks really, really red. So it's already applied a grade based on these uh, default settings. And the big thing with Film Convert is you can download profiles for specific cameras. Now, the camera I'm using on this doesn't have a profile, so I haven't downloaded any of them. But you can do that with all sort of major, major cameras, you know, your sort of FS5s and your C100s and your Canon 5Ds and... and um, uh, GH4, Panasonic GH4, all those, you know, they all have profiles dedicated for the way they operate. And that's one of the big pluses with Film Convert. So we have our shot list down the bottom here, and this is uh, a preset area, which has got some examples in at the moment. I don't have any presets set. So if we just click on one of these. Okay, yeah, so that's nice. It applies it very quickly. Um... Not really a look I would go for on this particular video, but um, that, that one's all right. These two are okay. I quite like the Hollywood 1 and the Hollywood 2. 
And can I do an undo? Well, control Z happily does an undo. That's good. Just to re-clarify, not a tutorial here. I'm kind of learning as I'm going along here. All right, so it tells you on your shot list which presets applied to that clip. That's nice. And yeah, so scrubbing, scrubbing through is not a good experience. It's very, very slow. But playback is surprisingly good. <laughs> I don't need them. Um, it's, it's very, very clean, that. Very nice. Right, so we're on quite a... <laughs> Just a shot of Rod's belly. Sorry, Rod. I'm oh, not suggesting you have a particularly that. large belly. I'm just saying Excuse it me. is a, a shot of your stomach. <laughs> okay, and... Let's have a look at some of the controls. Uh, so what have we got? Exposure and temperature, good. Let's just um, make some adjustments there. Mm, that's okay, yes, you can type it in if you want. And these sliders, that's a nice, this is a nice slider actually, but I'm just looking at the ones below here. These are tiny. Okay, so I can't, there's nothing to be, enable me to, see, I've kind of got a lot of wasted space here, left and right of the um, window, and I can't s extract this out. Uh, so I'm left with just, with just this tiny, tiny slider here to be able to do my um, shadows, mids, and uh, highlights. That's quite surprising. Uh, reset. Yep. So the reset works. So the color correction stuff in 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 film convert is really good. And let's face it, that's what it's about at the end of the day, isn't it? It's got to be. It's got to look good. Uh, but I'm really just interested in the the interface here and how the software actually works. So this is overexposed here. Let's see if we can recover that at all. No, I think that is actually is that actually blown out there. Um, and I'll just take. The, yeah, we've. We've lost our, we've lost detail there, haven't we? That's no good. Let's just try one of the other clips. So this is a clip of that I was recording earlier. And this is just yeah. So this is UHD as well. Much better to scrub through because it's not MP4, and the grade on that looks pretty nice. Straight out of the box, it looks good. Um, I'll show you the original. Bit too red. And that's the graded version. Hmm. So what else have we got? Well, we've got our film con standard film convert controls here for color, curve, size, um, the size of the fr uh, film, because if you do something like 8mm, obviously it gives you a much sort of, uh, well, it gives you a very different look and also arguably worse quality, worse resolution. And then you've got your grain amount here, nice easy slider there for grain amount, and your three-wheel color corrector. There's no, there are no values, unfortunately, on the shadows and mids. You can use the, you can use the scroll wheel to move up and down with the shadows and mids. So if I drop my blacks down, or I can push them up, give it a more kind of, um, give it that more kind of popular look at the moment, and maybe drop the mids within that a bit. And then I have a separate one for saturation, which again is quite nice. That's, a, yeah, that's a nice. I wish all the, one thing I would say, I wish all the sliders, these three, were as big as this one and this one, and I wish these had some values associated with them. Maybe I'm not using this correctly, but that's just a kind of um, first impression. Uh, this, these are, these are really nice actually, these pull really nicely. Let's just put, drop that there and drop that towards the blue. And a bit blacks down a bit. A bit more saturation maybe. And try changing the color temperature. Yeah, so we, I mean, I'm just playing around here, but, uh, yeah, so these work really, really nicely. Really, really responsive, which is really important, considering it's doing this on a UHD clip. They're very, very responsive to the change. No lag whatsoever. 
and I can just do a quick reset of that, reset of that, and reset of that to get back to my original and reset all. I can do there. But I do still initially have the film applied to the clip. So to, to stop, you know, if you wanted to grade the original, you'd probably have to pull both those sliders down to start with because then you're looking at the original clip and then you can maybe do your initial kind of um, grade on your on your on your footage something like that so not a very nice expression i've got there on my face and and then apl maybe apply your film look after over the top of it and sort of neutralize and and balance out all the colors as you would want them to be so it looks really nice uh, you've got all your standard film stocks here as per the plugin and you have a histogram i do i do wish it had a a waveform as well uh because when you use the plugin, you can use the waveform in your in your um, NLE, uh, so in Premiere or in DaVinci or whatever you're using. But in in this, you don't have that option. So I, I'm not a big fan of of this of a histogram for video. I prefer using a waveform. That's I guess that just depends on what you're used to doing and work how, where you work. Um, you know what you've worked with previously, but that's just my preference. So let's have a quick look at these. These are this is a bit of log footage. The same clips I was using the other day. So we've seen these before. They've got this guy on his boat. So that's log footage. Um, I don't have a profile, otherwise I would use a vlog profile. So I'll just drop these down to start with and just do a quick drop my blacks down. Just a really quick and Quick and dirty grade of this. Drop my mids a bit. Yeah, so it's kind of pushing it to its lim the limits of the sliders here to do a log grade. But that's all right. So there we go. There's our. Um, can we change the temperature? Oh, we can. Good, good. It's quite a sensitive control, that. And so we've gone from that to that. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Just really, really quickly with a color corrector there. Just gone from that to that. And then let's apply the film look to it. So there's the film look, balancing out the colors to, to the particular stock. And just try a different stock. We can add maybe a bit more grain to that. Okay, so let's say we're happy with that. That scrubs really nicely through because this is just a full HD DNX HD clip. So really, really quick. And of course, very, very quick to play, which is useful. So you can actually watch your footage back. Even this stuff here, um, you know, MP4, UHD, 50 frames a second. You, you can still play back in so pretty much real time. That is really impressive. So let's go and let's say we want to render, render this clip. We've got our in point and our out point, so I'll just render a tiny bit of it. Oh, this is nice here. If you see down the bottom here, as you move your in and out point, it puts a little bar across it. That's really that's a really good um, good utilization of that there. And let's go to our render settings. So I'm not going to render them all out. So can I can I deselect all? There's no right click functionality whatsoever. I've noticed that. Uh, but okay, so there's no there is no way to deselect all. So if you have loads of clips, uh, I don't think there is edit. No, if you have loads of clips, you just have to. Oh no, hang on. Look, can I select multiple? And oh yes, sorry, sorry, that's me being stupid. Select multiple with a shift, and then you get you can. Okay, you can do it that way. So I'm just going to do the clip of this guy. And again, no scrubbing through on the thumbnail. That's a shame. And what options do we have? Well, um, we have H.264. Okay, we don't have many options at all here. We have H.264, <laughs> high quality medium or preview. That's it. No other options around it by the look of things. <laughs> like, 
nothing around keyframes or profiles or, <laughs> or anything like that. But let's face it, if we're pulling, if we're getting so, um, something out of this kind of software, we're probably not going to be using H.264 at this stage. Uh, so let's do it into a TIFF sequence. And it is, okay, so it supports up to, it happily supports up to DCI, uh, 4K DCI. That's good. But this clip is only full HD, so I'm only going to do it to full HD. Fit width, fit height, stretch to fit. No, I don't want to. So fit just fit width will be okay. And I'm going to go to, I'll just do it to this test sequence. And let's see how quickly it renders. Well, that's pretty good. 12 frames per second. Only, 100, only doing 123 frames. And if I just open up that on my drive, you can see that where my test sequence is, because of the original file name, it's put it in its own folder based on that file name, which makes a lot of sense. So there are all the TIFF images. They are 7.91 meg each. And if I just open up one of those, oh, okay, let me just... Um, Use Photoshop to open that up. Just got to wait for Photoshop to load now. And probably make my... Oh, come on. So there's our... There's our full HD frame. That's pretty nice. Does that look close to the original? Go back to the film settings. Well, it's hard to tell, isn't it, exactly? But... It's going to be pretty much like, it's going to be a perfect match, isn't it, really? Uh, so, yeah, so it's a bit basic. Uh, there's a lot of stuff missing that I would probably need to be able to use this as a permanent sort of uh, replacement for anything else. But it's the color correct a bit, this bit, lovely to use, these, we these um, color wheels here. Uh, these sliders need to have values and need to be bigger. Give me a waveform any day. This bit's perfect. No no qualms with the film film bit at all. Color temperature a little bit sensitive that. Uh, but can you can you wheel that? Oh, you can wheel that. But small t tiny values. That's nice. That's great. And can you wheel that as well? Exposure exposure is quite sensitive too. Maybe there are options around holding. But again, you can type it in. You know, you can type in your, the values. And. Mm, yeah, no, no scrubbing, no so, no kind of previews of your footage on there, which is a shame. And very limited help. There's, no, there is no help actually. There's just a help menu with various registration stuff. And that's about it. No preferences, but it seems to be fairly performed fairly well. I'm well impressed by the uh, the fact it can render and and do the conversion on UHD footage on the fly. Really good. So yeah, that, that's the Film Convert standalone edition for Windows, released in April 2016, but it's the first time I've actually, since buying it in April, I've actually first time I've actually got it out of the box, so to speak, and had a play with it. And uh, there you go, that's just my first, first impressions. Thanks for watching, and if the guys from Film Convert ever see this, it'd be great if you take into consideration my thoughts on this one. And of course, thanks also to... Um, Philip Bloom, because uh, I did use a code on his website to get 10% off. So if, I think if you go to his website, you will be able to find that. If you just type Film Convert Philip Bloom on Google, you'll find whether that code is still active and whether you can get 10% off your purchase as well. So, yep, thanks to the guys at Film Convert. And I will catch you soon. See you later. Subscribe if you like what we do. It's really helpful, really motivates, and really um, helps me grow the channel. So really appreciate that. Thank you. Bye.